Okay, we're coming up on time to do a coolant change. Now the way I do it, I do it simple. I like to keep it simple. And I just simply get the tractor warmed up, good and warm, not too hot, drain the radiator, and refill the radiator. I call that good for a couple more years. Now a lot of this depends on how many hours you're running. If you're running four to six hundred hours a year, you might want to do it every year. I only do the radiator, drain and refill, because it's so easy. We'll take a look at the block down here. Now you're going to get into, and I've got the block heater, which, you know, you could pull that. That's some work that I really don't want to get into right now. The total coolant capacity on these 1 Series tractors, like the 1023 and the 1025R, well, the 1025R specifically, is 3.9 quarts. That's total. That includes the block and the radiator. So if I drain the radiator, and if I get 2, 2.5 two quarts out of it, I'm going to be pretty happy with that. Because I know I'm going to do it again in just a couple of years, or another 150 to 200 hours. John Deere makes it pretty easy for you. You do have to remove the screen. makes it a lot easier. Let's just get the screen up out of the way. There's your radiator petcock. It has a hose attached to it. You can put your drain container underneath the tractor and catch it all. So now we'll drain it and see how it looks. It almost looks better without the light. Okay, I've got a fairly clean bucket in place just to kind of get an idea of what the uh, old coolant looks like. This coolant has probably got 400 hours on it. I went a little bit longer than what I had anticipated I would. Well, the petcock's definitely making it nice and easy. Now, I did crack it loose with my other hand, did not require any pliers or anything. It's just plastic. I use a lot of common sense here. Don't do it when the coolant's too hot. You don't want to burn yourself. It just has to be warm. Okay, we got it coming out now in the bucket pretty good. John Deere uses that kind of light yellow coolant. But we'll get a good idea now what we get out of when we drain the radiator really good. You can kind of use that going ahead on your maintenance program. And not everybody is going to agree with this way of changing your coolant out. Some of them are going to want to do a flush. They're going to back flush it. They're going to drain the block. Any current member of the coolant police will more than likely be down on this video because we're only doing the radiator. I've done it this way for decades. I've not had any premature water pump failures, premature seals failing on me. I've never had radiators getting plugged up. The secret to this is, is do it often. Often men don't wait every five or six years. Don't wait 500 to 800 hours when you do it. Cut that in half and do this. You can do it as often as you want. This is brand new. I anticipated doing this sometimes in 20, right after COVID came into full swing, but somehow put it off. Now some of you are thinking, why put in this brand new fresh coolant and mix it in with the old and get it dirty? Well, my thoughts is, is that I take this brand new fresh coolant and I mix it in with the old and I'm making it that much better. Well, after it got started draining, we went ahead and opened up the radiator cap safely. It's not hot, it's just warm. You can feel the tank. And we can hear it pick up again down here. Yeah, it's picking up pretty good. So let's go ahead and remove the radiator cap and I'll show you what I mean if we can see the, uh, the core itself. Cap looks good, good and clean. Pretty good stream. We can't really tell how dirty it is until we get it out and look at it. And it's not like I'm going to run through a filter or anything and try to find out. If you are that particular, you can send that off to, to laboratories like Blackstone and get a parts per million contest. It would be interesting to see what it does run in iron from circulating through the cast iron block and silicones from the gasket. Let's take a look into the radiator. All up and down that core. And it looks brand new. That is a testament to John Deere's quality of coolant. That is an awful good coolant. You would not believe how clean that radiator is. So you can see right there, I'm draining some of the block. Those leaders, let me spin this around the quartz. Well, we're running up on two and a half quartz right now. Still got a pretty good stream, so that just tells me we're definitely getting some of that coolant out of the box. And I want it warm. Oh yeah, that's warm. I think that's just right to get any suspended particles flowing, circulating into the block and stuff. And we'll get a uh, clear container and we'll compare that to the brand new cooler that we have here, the cool guard. This is pre-diluted right there. Do not add water. It's good for 34 degrees below zero. 
37C. Okay, we got a good finish on the drain. We're sitting right at 2.9 quarts. That's 75% of total capacity between the radiator and the block. So we have at the most one quart. And while the coolant police may not agree, nonetheless, this is a very fast, effective way of changing the coolant. Because who's to say when you drain that block, you may not get it all even then. And then the next level would be, or the next tier of maintenance on it would be a full flush. And as long as I can get 75% of the coolant out with a simple drain and refill, there's no way it's worth it. Okay, you're looking straight down on it. One is about three years old with 300 hours on it. The other one's brand new out of the jug. Let's get down on a sideways view. I'm glad I marked them. I don't think I can tell them apart. Now let's carry them over in the shade. See if it makes any difference. Okay, we're in the shade now. It just shows you how good the John Deere coolant is. Cool Guard 2, pre-diluted. Okay, we're going to fill her up, put it down in the maintenance log. Filling her up here, boss. Guys, thanks for watching. Work safe out there.